Good morning. I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but here in Dorset, it's drizzling. I am in Dorset at St Giles House, which is the the seat or the uh, the estate of the Earl of Shrewsbury. No, that's not right. <laughs> the Earl of Shrewsbury. <laughs> I'm in Dorset this morning, this weekend, at St Giles House, which is the the country seat of the Earl of Shaftesbury. He of um, Shas Shaftesbury Avenue, uh, not the Monopoly board game Shaftesbury Avenue, the real Shaftesbury Avenue. Uh, sounds like a policeman, doesn't it? Shaftesbury Avenue. And uh, the Eros of Piccadilly Circus, there is a, um, a twin of that in the garden at the front of the house just behind me. I have come out for um, a morning walk around the lake, which you can see behind me. Uh, it's not unpleasant, the drizzle. There's, Lots of lovely old tree coverage. I'm here with about 120 others from all over the UK and uh, the rest of the world actually for the Realisation Festival. Get realised or your money back. And the, uh, the star term, so to speak, if I could speak so irreverently about the writer and neuropsychologist Ian McGilchrist, whose book, Master and His Emissary, uh, emphasized the difference between the left brain and the right brain. The left brain being more logical and paying attention to detail and the right brain being more holistic and getting the big picture. And his creed occur in, in that book is that um, we've gone mad. We've gone mad for the left brain in the past uh, few hundred years and particularly now where the left brain which seeks power and control um, is taken over society and the more holistic values have been all but discarded. Discuss his uh, latest book however a mighty tome or indeed two tomes uh, that's a that's a, a scar label, a Birmingham Midlands scar label, two tones. It's called the Matter with the Things, which is uh, over a thousand pages. Um, I have it in my tiny house. And what indeed is the matter with things? Well, first of all, matter ain't what it used to be. Um, uh, we, most of us have grown up with the Newtonian idea of matter or at being made up of atoms and molecules like billiard balls, snooker balls. But the quantum physicists messed with our balls and tell us they're, they're not particles after all, they're perturbations in a wave function. And all of this apparent reality that we can see and touch and lakes that we can walk around, it's not that they're illusionary. I think this is uh, one of the 
my mistake, mis misguided statements of the spiritual tradition. It's all my, it's all illusion. I don't, uh, I don't go for that myself. Uh, this, I may see this through my eyes only, but this lovely stream, this place is not an illusion. Um, if I jump off this bridge, I'll get my feet wet. And that's how it should be and how it's intended to be, because it's gorgeous. So I'm not uh, an illusionist in that respect. I'm a detectorist. That's what it says in the program here. Phil Shankland, detectorist of consciousness. There's a little, oh, I thought it was a rabbit. It's a squirrel. Um, and I was um, encouraged to hear Ian McGilchrist in his excellent talk yesterday uh, confirm my suspicion, anyway, as yet unproven, that um, consciousness is primary. By that he means, well, I think I know what he means. I'm, I might be barking up the wrong tree, but what I think he means, and I mean by consciousness is primary, is that um, consciousness comes first before matter. So consciousness is not an emergent quality of matter. How on earth would that happen? But rather, matter is an emergence from consciousness. But I asked him, so is consciousness mental or is it physical? And he said, um, let me just get this right to be uh, doing justice. If I remember correctly, Ian McGilchrist said, um, neither, but the background, the primary, I don't want to use the word substance because that's a Spinoza word, which is, uh, it's, it's, it just muddies it, frankly. But before mind and before matter is, is this background, let, let's say, ocean of consciousness. Now, the term that he seemed to prefer, and indeed I prefer in my book, is the term ground of being. Uh, and the, this has got the advantage of being um, vague. <laughs> oh, uh, is, uh, Phil, tell me, is, is m mental stuff or physical stuff um, sort of the most fundamental? No, it's the ground of being. You see, what, what can I tell you about the ground of being? Well, the uh, British philosopher Bertrand Russell, he wrote not one book, but two books about this. One book on mental stuff and one book on physical stuff. Proper books. And uh, his conclusion, it makes me laugh. Oh dear. Uh, his conclusion is that, as Ian and I would agree with Bertrand Russell, there is some background uh, which uh, he calls, this is true, neutral stuff. <laughs> great British philosopher uh, uh, pins the tail on the donkey and calls this background which Ian calls consciousness um, and I would call ground of being neutral stuff well that's too neutral for me because um, in my experience perhaps in yours um, neutral sounds disinterested 
but it seems to me this wonderful creation and our, both our physical manifestation of mentation and our um, imaginings and loves and sense of awe and wonder um, is certainly not neutral. Um, uh, it's wondrous. Keeps us engaged in uh, in this path of life. What's it all about? And I would I would use the word benign. This is my favourite word at the moment. This this background ocean of pre matter pre mental is benign. And for me, uh, that ground of being is benign, out of which you and I and everything else springs. It must be breakfast time in St Giles' house. See you later.